go. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ryan Nickel coming at you with yes, Randy Just, and today is what? It's Walkthrough Wednesday. There we go. We've got some exciting things. That's right. Today. Yeah. A little more technical, guys, but hey, you know, you guys want to learn this stuff. So. This is the stuff that, man, it's like way <coughs> in my head. Like, I'm like, hey, man, I'll go find the house. You fix it up. And like, Randy's like, hey, did you know this? I'm like, what the yeah, heck? Yeah, we'll talk about this stuff. So anyway, <laughs> we're going to be talking about two subjects today. We're going to be talking about humidity sensors. One. Okay. There's one. No, no. And two is arc faults. Two? Yeah, there we go. Two things. So All right. we'll elaborate on those. But just kind of a quick overview. Uh, we'll talk about the humidity sensors first. All right. Okay. And you go, what the heck are you talking about humidity sensors? Well, um, to give you a little bit of history through time here. Uh, this is mostly about bathrooms. Okay. All right. We're going way back now. Way back. Bathroom. Well, not way, way back, but a few decades, okay? Maybe 50s, 60s. Back in the day, uh, and this really pertains to an area that you have a shower or a bathtub. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And one of the things that happens when people take a shower or bathtub, um, windows are closed, it generates humidity. Yeah. yeah. You get the steam and everything. I personally Yeah, your love, mirrors fog up. You yeah, know, you write yeah. little love messages to your wife on it. I personally love taking a long shower. I know, waste water, all that fun stuff. But I, I love that steam and my sinuses, and it just feels really, really I just great. go to the steam room at the gym. Well, he's... He's wealthier than I am, so he can do that. Anyway, I'm like Mr. Lowe. That's why you guys should invest in real estate. Not, nah, not buy it and fix it, but then nah, nah, <laughs> do the whole yeah, selling yeah. stuff. So back in the day, in the probably 50s, maybe in the 40s, the 60s, um, maybe in some degree in the 70s, it was okay. Or even what, the 80s. Uh, I don't know about that far from right. Anyway, what happened was, instead of having a bent fan, yeah. if you had a window that could open up, that was considered venting for the bathroom. Yeah, there's many houses I've been in there like that. Yeah, that's, it's like, it. it's like, that's okay. it. It's yep. like, okay, there's a window in the bathroom. You take a shower, you open the window up. Right, right. And that's how you get the moisture out of the room. Well, well, I can't tell you which year, what happened when, but at some point we actually have fans. Oh. Okay. Now, the fans often have a little exhaust uh, pipe that goes up there. It's supposed to be external. I'm going to mention this to you because I have seen some properties. They put the vent fan in there, but it just vents into the attic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I think on Wildwood. That oh, was no. the case. Do we have one? Yeah. Like that, so it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. It actually vents into the attic. What do you think happens in the attic? Mold, moisture. You get mold. Thing, yeah. What happens is it starts molding. Well, that's exactly stuff. what happened because right around there we had all these like the mold that was there that had to be cut out. So, so yeah. So anyway, I didn't know now that what it was, but well, now so I do. Happens. So yeah. what happens is the vent was going into the attic as opposed to a pipe, an exhaust pipe out, out sticking out. Of the Hang on, room. real quick. I want you guys to think about this. How intelligently you can talk to a sell to a seller when you're actually walking through the property. And you're like, oh, I bet you this only vents into the attic. That's why there's mold there. It's Thank you, Randy. Just well, that's right. Actually, on an apartment complex in every single unit. Oh, in mean, mean, over 30, 40, 50 years, there was a fair amount of mold oh, out there. Gosh. It got cleaned up and we took care yeah. of it. But anyway, so that, so so that happens now. So we're venting out. So that all sounds good. Well, uh, more current codes. This is what's happening now. Mm -hmm. Is like. Okay, so now you can put the switch on to turn the fan on, but someone has to consciously turn the switch. Turn the switch. My on. mom is oh my gosh! Whenever I go visit, my mom's like, "Make sure you turn the fan on. Make sure you wipe open the windows. Make sure you wipe everything down." Like she freaks out about it. Well, because it creates all kind of moisture. Yeah, more okay. more work for her. Yeah, yeah, it creates some moisture. And <coughs> unless you turn the fan on, it's not going to release. It's going to yeah. stick all there. So, and my mom really does sound like that too, by the way. <coughs> Anyway, so now, our videos. <laughs> now we've moved forward a little bit and we actually now have a humidity sensor mm. that's, okay, there's a couple of humidity sensors. You actually can go buy one that looks like a light switch. Okay. And so what you do is you put that humidity sensor then and you put that in front of the fan and when that humidity sensor detects humidity, it just automatically turns the fan on. Ah, okay. got it, okay. Or you can actually buy uh, a vent fan that has a humidity sensor built into it. Bam, check that out. And so if you permanently wire that, then what happens is anytime there's a certain amount of humidity in there, it just turns on automatically. But there's also a switch that you can press to override it. Oh, so just automatically turn it on. Right, in the case of, you know, human smells. Oh. Okay, so you may not have humidity in the bathroom, but you have. So it still vents out, vents the smell so, out. Yeah, yeah ah. it vents the smell, so you turn the vent, so that's essentially over. We would never use that for my, for my case. <coughs> I know. Mr. Rose, yes. <laughs> that's right. Yes, all right. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway, so, and affectionately in this trade, like the trades people and stuff, we call them fart fans. Fart so, fans? I never yeah. heard that of fart yeah, fans. Yeah, it's like, let's let's. Do you have know. an example of what a fart fan looks like? Well, what we do, I'm going to show you here. All right. Now, this one's not installed yet. Yeah, let's go ahead and turn this around real quick. All right, Randy, where's this fart fan? So, this is the fart fan right here. And got a little dust on it. Oh, wow. But, Check um, that out. It's quite, it's quite large, isn't it? Yeah, we're actually getting ready to install this one. Now, what's going on here? This this fan, um, you can go buy a little, this a regular fan that you can van out. They're like 20 bucks, $25. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, they're relatively little cheap well plastic, yeah. little white ones with a little fake cover yeah, on the side. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone knows what we're talking about. But these here are probably in the hundred fifty to two hundred dollar range. Whoa. They're actually pretty sophisticated. Big baller over here, man. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, but but the required code. Oh, so no more of those little cheapies anymore, huh? Well, if you're doing new construction, like a lot ah. of people has to have either a, a front load fan or a humidity sensor or the humidity sensor built into the unit. That is code statewide. Um, every place I've been doing work lately is requiring oh, that. So interesting. So that's something we need to keep in mind. Well, this actually is a van fan. You'll see here. I'll just kind of go through this here. This is actually uh, a little little tech. Learn, learn some uh, some some buzzwords. What do you think this thing is called? This is actually the motor for the fan. But we actually call this the this setup here so a particular name. Um. You know, it looks like a slideshow from like the 60s. Okay. The well, 50s. that's pretty funny. <laughs> it's actually called a squirrel cage. A squirrel cage? Yeah, it's called a squirrel cage. Oh. And they probably mean like a I can see it, like a hamster wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happens is it takes the air in and it blows it out. Now this here, you see the, the hole here. Yeah, yeah. And that's where the exhaust is. Going. Goes up to the, to the, up to the vent. Yeah, yep. so we're going to have a oh. four-inch pipe. Now this lights. is only a three-inch three inch here. But what happens is essentially this gets connected in there. Got it. It goes out. It's three inches. Into the squirrel pipe. cage. No, from the squirrel cage to the... Right, to the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it connects here. Right. Squirrel cage of all things, man. Yeah. So what's going to happen here is... That's going to happen. But now if we look down here, and you probably have to zoom in here a little bit, you do see a couple things there. I do see those. And what do they say on there? It says humidity. Oh, humidity. One says humidity. And one minutes. Says <coughs> so you just... How much humidity is going to kick it off? Oh, okay. So the percentage there. And then how long the motor is actually going to run. And so what's standard? Does it give you any kind of like recommendations? No, I'm just going to let them there. Now, I just going to leave it in factory settings? <laughs> yes, I'll leave it. But I did talk to an electrician today, and he said he had one installation where... <coughs> Excuse me, get some water here. Wait, the, the oh, fan, you're all out of water. Look at that. Oh, no. The fan, the fan, uh, dun, dun, dun. The fan kept running. Yeah. Because? Uh, because, 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 because of the wonderful oh, things I'll he does. why. Oh. Because okay. it's... Never truly vented out. No, no. Because if you think about it, this is going up in the ceiling. Yep. Like so. And what happens is there was some humidity in the attic. Mm. So that was triggering the humidity sensor on here. Gotcha. So he said that the manufacturer suggested they put insulation over the top. To prevent that from happening. To prevent that from happening. That would be annoying. So, unless yeah, you, be, in, like, unless, how do I turn it off? How do I turn it off? Right. It's unless, running and running and running. you know, you like white noise and it's near your bedroom. Yeah. Or something like that. <laughs> anyway, it's really weird though because the schematics on them are set up that you have like two switches. One, it's an override for the automatic humidity sensor. Got but it. then people just turn that off and they never turn on automatically, which defeats the whole purpose of why, ah. why the code is that they want the humidity sensor going. So Makes it's sense. a little funky. So anyway, what's going to happen here is you visualize this. This gets mounted uh, across one of the rafters. See these little yep. ears here? We call these ears. And then this is going to get mounted this direction here. Electrical wiring is going to come in this little hole here. Got it. And then we have the vent over here. Right there. It's going to go up to the, the, the vent stack that comes out of the roof. Yep. And then this gets mount, mounted flush with the ceiling at the bottom. Yep. And there's a grill that goes across there. Right. And we'll actually, let's take them on a quick ride here. We'll show what the finished product All right, let's go for like. a tour. We'll show you what the finished one actually looks like. Oh, this one's already installed. Yeah, we're going to need to slide two of the same ones. And... All right. So if you look up there. So this circle one is it? That's it. Oh. So what we saw was the top part of that. This is the finished installed product. Here. So it's a part of a light. Yes, part of a light. That's right. So there's both of uh, there's a. Now, some of these are really, really complex because they can have a Bluetooth speaker in them. Right. They can have a nightlight in them. They have the light and they have the fan. This one here doesn't have the Bluetooth speaker. It doesn't have a nightlight. But yeah, for yeah. for an extra fifteen hundred dollars, they can pay for it, and you can no, put it in, right? No, it's actually a pretty reasonable. No, I'm just saying on your sales price. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs>
so, oh, this one here. Always the salesman. I don't know if you guys, if we say really quiet, you might be able to hear the fan. The one thing about this oh, one's pretty it's quiet. It's a pretty quiet fan. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty quiet, so. All right? All right. So now. Beautiful job, Randy. Well, thank you. What, you mean as far as the presentation, right? Uh, as far as the work goes, because last time I was in there, oh, it looked like okay. where, we're going, where we're going right now. Okay. Or actually, I'm going to sneak them into... Oh my gosh, look at this mess! Yeah, we're getting ready to do some... This is the we're crazy... Put... Oh my gosh! You're ready to put the <laughs> over there? Alright. Well, let's talk about, before we go off to the, the main panel, let's talk a bit about arc faults. Alright, let's go ahead and reverse this camera here. So let's talk about arc faults. Because I'm sure they want to see, see me arc too. Fault. Whose fault? Whose fault is the arc? I don't and, know. Yeah, Noah's arc. Noah's arc? There we go. Anyway. So... Uh, this particular uh, municipality that we're doing this uh, uh, renovation on, mm -hmm. they actually require an arc fault on every single circuit. And believe it or not, each of these is about 40, 45 bucks a pop. So we're probably looking anywhere from four to six hundred dollars. And people day. wonder why affordable housing is not anywhere to be found, found, found yeah, in California, like, anywhere. Just, just yeah. Like four to six hundred bucks Holy on the tallest crap. house. So wow. what happens is with arc fault, we can. You can actually buy outlets that are arc fault outlets. Okay. But those are, and if you replace all the outlets in the house with those, it'd be really expensive. Even more. Even more, because they're probably 25 to 40 bucks for each outlet. Or something and we like have that. like every yeah, two inches of outlet. Them. Yeah. <laughs> so that could be really expensive that way. So what you can do is replace the circuit breaker mm. with the arc fault. But here's the problem, guys. An arc fault is, takes up a whole breaker space. Gotcha. And so we have panels now, and I, I talked to two electricians about this. It's becoming a real headache because the panel holds only so many breakers. Yeah. And so we used to do what we call the wafer. We put a wafer breaker in there, which actually fits two breakers in the space of one. Gotcha. Okay. The wafer. Yeah, but the arc faults, they don't make the wafer size. So you can't fit two, so it's full size. So what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to have to work it out. Then. I'm going to have to combine some circuits together mm. and pig, a pigtail together. In order to make that happen, and I hope I can do it. To be honest with you, or I'm gonna have to put a sub panel, Seven, yeah. a sub panel to allow that to happen. That's what I was thinking. An expensive endeavor. Very expensive. Yeah, we're yeah. here at the town as project. <clears throat> this particular municipality, I thought I only had to put the arc fault in for the bedrooms, <coughs> but it looks like it's for every single circuit, which is kind of just crazy. It's like wow, wow, because like, wow. we have to right now we have to do a separate circuit for the refrigerator, separate circuit for the garbage disposal, separate circuit for the. The, um, Here's what's going to happen though, because if you double these things up, you're gonna, the likelihood of it tripping is going to go up, isn't it? No, 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 okay. no, there's nothing to do with that. It's just the panels this big, the Shows box, what I know. and you only can fit so much in there. So it's almost like you have to use this huge oversized panel for a small house. Oh, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. So we're trying to work with that. I was going to, I left a message with the city inspector. He never called back. Uh, I scheduled an inspection tomorrow. I'm going to have that discussion and maybe, maybe they can let us slide on some of them. I don't know, but... Um, like I say, I don't believe it's a California state code or national code. It's just municipality by municipality. Oh, goodness so, gracious. Well, so let's anyway. take a look. Let's go take a look. Okay. Now, one thing I did not mention, what's the point of an arc fault? We didn't talk about that, did we, Ryan? Uh, you know what? We did not. Do you want me to close the door so the squirrel doesn't get back in the house again? The squirrel's into the squirrel cage? Yeah. I know it was a big concern. We'll go close it. Well, I, you, Ryan, didn't, you, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't acknowledge me. Because it takes two hands to hold this huge camera. Okay, I know, Mr. It's like, Mr. Mr. I got three three cameras on my on, on my, my iPhone, phone. my iPhone Pro. There he goes. He's so excited. Well, you know what? You have a you're gonna have a huge sub panel for this huge. No, there's AC not a huge that you got. <laughs> so anyway, what's gonna happen is, um, the arc fault does this. I, I don't know if you guys have ever even like your you like your notebook computer or something. Yeah. Have you ever plugged the corner of the wall and you see a little spark oh, yeah, I see in that, there? Yeah. Well that's an arc. Okay. So let's conceive it. It's been a want. long time since I've had I think I like I've rubbed my like hair on the carpet and plugged it in at the same time or something. Well, they get an arc. Or like a motor. Yeah. There's different things that cause some kind of arc situation. Possibly could well, be a, a vacuum, fire hazard. right? What's that? A vacuum does that. A vacuum could cause a fire hazard. Yeah. Okay. And so this arcing, this electricity, that sometimes that burns holes and things and that kind of stuff, and then eventually, you know, fire some kind of hazard. Yeah. So the arc fault recognizes that and shuts the power down. Gotcha. And that's what's going on. So, so you have a you have a built-in fire inspector, fire marshal inside every one of these panels. Oh, oh, yeah. So this panel here, there's actually two arc fault 
uh, circuit breakers there. You'll see one here. Oh. And one here. And you'll see this little white button here, which allows you to actually test our quality, well, make sure it's still working. One of these actually goes to this unit here. If I click that, you see that? Yep. So that was being tested. The same thing with this one. So they have a little tester. And they have these connectors actually can have a ground fault built into them as well. You don't so, say. So they're like five bucks more. So I'm probably going to replace these with <coughs> ones that actually have a ground fault in there too. So they're about 50 bucks a You were in the attic today, weren't you? Yes, I was. Uh, you swallowed some insulation. Yes, I did. <laughs> I wasn't in the attic really. I was like working or cutting down below to put the... Uh, the fart fan in. The fart fan. <laughs> so anyway, so what's going to happen is, see all these wafers here, how there's two of them? Yeah. I'm going to have to take those out and put in these uh, there, so I'm not going to have as many slots. Now, can you take them back because they're used? I can use them for another project. Well, I don't know. If, if, I use them for another project. Better not be in this municipality. Yeah, there'll be another municipality because there's a total of, it looks like you got 16 here. Which could technically allow me to put um, 16 of those. Well, 32, but you got your main one there, and I've got a couple of ones for sub panels here. But instead of these, each one, so I'm gonna have to. Uh, I have, I have faith in you. I well, there you go. So anyway, so that's our discussion on Arcfall. Do you have any questions about that, Ryan? You know what? I don't. It was all over my head, but I I, <clears throat> I trust you. Oh, do you? Well, um, so when you guys are out there rehabbing houses, I think kind of the moral of the story is. You need to call uh, what the local municipality is or the county or whatever it is and ask what they're going to require because I'm going to be going with a little bit of uh, work here. Got to, to reduce to make them. That yeah, happen. you have to redo yeah. it, don't you? Yeah, to go through that and I'll have that discussion with them tomorrow. We got one other issue too. It's a couple of mass heads. I had some other guys do some work for me and they uh, oh. put the mass heads too close together and it might be. Uh, oh, man. And there's some possibility this municipality may not even allow an overhead wire anymore. What? So we may have to go underground. All the things we do for a buck. Yes, yes. And then, well, here, I'll point this out. We weren't talking about this specifically. But you see this, this wire is up the, here, Ryan? This is the bonus for those who stay tuned. Yeah. This up here? Yeah, I see this wire. I believe we have to have a 12-foot clearance up there. Oh, man! Because people walk with a stick or something, or a tree branch, or whatever they do. Or the or pinatas. Stick or pinata, you know. Yeah. Oh, let's we'll take our pinata let's off Let's take our pinata on that yeah. thing. <laughs> so, It'd be an electrifying experience for your kids. Yeah, and then we also... <laughs> You also have to be concerned about the heights of the mass. Um, oh. I think we need to have, I talked to two electricians today. One was an 18 inch separation. The other guy said three feet. We're going to find that out. Ooh. Well, then, then what are you going to do then? Uh, I'm probably going to put a sub panel over there. On the side, of, yeah. Yeah, and then I'm going to move that over, but I'm going to have a little bit of uh, patch repair on the roof up there. Ooh. So, and then this one over here, I believe this, this weather head is over 42 Man, inches. And the county is always digging into our pocketbooks, aren't they? This is a city, dude. This is a city. That's right, a city. So this one here, I might have to actually put a brace behind it because I think that mass head's over 42 inches. So. Oh. So just little things. I yeah. Mean, this is not an easy business, folks. I mean, you think, oh, I'm going to go rehab a house, you know? So it's like, this is the crap you don't. You, you don't see this stuff on HGTV. No, they really don't. It's like, yeah. here's your 30-minute show. Blah, 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 blah. The house looks beautiful afterwards. Then they throw those numbers up on the screen. and Everyone's happy, else. drinking champagne. Yeah, it's all yeah, done. yeah. It's like, oh, we love our house. Well, this is all the little stuff that you have to do to make sure it's done correctly. And to the truth, I don't know if they do it correctly on those shows or not. I don't know. You. We assume. Oh, hang on, let's turn this around. Okay. I mean, it's a nice assumption. You want to, you want to think the best of these guys. But I actually know somebody, Randy, who uh, has a show on HGTV. Yeah. And believe it or not, he goes negative on the actual properties that he has I on his show. It. I can believe it. Well, the re part of the reason why is that they have this production time, this lead time that they have to keep the properties right, in the queue. And so it's in the queue for longer than it needs to be in order for them to make money. And so they're just so he's, burning he's through. Losing, yeah, yeah, he's losing I money. It. I can believe it. And I asked him, I said, well, why are you why doing do that? Why yeah. do it? For the notoriety. Notoriety. Yeah, but so another Am I saying that right? Notoriety? Yes, yeah, no, that time. That's yeah, right, that time. Like, so it's for ego and fame. Yeah, funny. well, he can go and knock on a door and say, hey, we're going to do this. You know, your house could be featured on our next show. And people and are excited about it. If I was yeah. a seller, I'd be like, who the hell cares? Now, so give, me give me my price that's right yeah get, yeah get in and get out so i guess i mean for some reason but i mean yeah. it is a, a nice pat on the back there you go but yeah when i heard that i was amazed so but yeah. anyway that's kind of the deal about the arc faults humidity sensors and you learn a little bit about the the mass overheads so. i'm actually a little bit jealous i think i want my own show you want your own show guess what walk through wednesday with ryan yeah. and randy oh there oh, we go check it out okay so so i don't need a nice big old logo on hd tv i just go out and make it myself with my own little so handheld ryan, I pro, I, iPhone Pro. <laughs> right, I'm going to ask you this. Oh, no. How many deals can it take to change your life? How many deals, Ryan? 
Who knows Solamente? One deal. Really? Yeah. Just one deal. We always say that. That's right. All it takes is one deal. One deal will change your life financially. One one deal is all it takes to change your life financially for the rest of your life. It could. It could. Yeah, it can change your complete financial future. Well, anyway, hey, thanks for joining us for this walkthrough Wednesday. I'm going to shoot my phone number out to you. If you like, contact me, 530-812-5143. That's 530-812-5143. You need a little help consulting or whatever, you know, I can do those services too. We have our meetups on uh, the third Tuesday of each month, yep, right? Yep, we do. If you want to learn how to go out and find these properties, just like this one here. Funny story about this house is I knocked on this one before Randy ever bought it from the bank. <laughs> yeah, but I, mean, I don't even... I didn't think get we, it, we though. We weren't even working together. No, we time. weren't. I yeah. couldn't get it. The lady, uh, she told me all these crazy stories of what I didn't want about it. And at that time, I didn't have money or resources or the friend in the business to do it. So I let this one slip on by. And look at how... How I mean, life life does it. That's right. How stuff. fortunate it was. But once again, hey, thanks for joining us, guys. And yeah. uh, want to get a hold of me? You know how to reach me out. These are on my channel, so just reach out to me, and we'll get you started. There we go. Peace on, guys. See you guys.